All right guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the shop. Today we are doing a couple of different products on a 2021 Forerunner. Now these products are gonna be the same for pretty much the 2019 Up Forerunner. Um, some of the products like the SDHQ ones are gonna be the same for all of your fifth gen Forerunners and technically your fourth gen Forerunners as well for some of these. Uh, we're gonna be throwing in a new battery from Full Throttle along with our Garmin kit. We're gonna show you how to install that on these newer Forerunners that some of the 2019s had it, but the 2020 plus Forerunners, they all have that new fuse box relay box right there behind the factory one. So let's jump into it. I'll show you how to modify that box to fit our bracket system and then how to get it all installed along with some of these goodies. So as you see, this truck is still completely stock from an electrical standpoint. So we're gonna go ahead and start taking some of this stuff out. We're gonna start by taking the terminals off. Walk up in the life. Yeah, I'm really am. Talking my shit like I'm really him, hold up. Look, walking this bitch like Hey. Yeah, I'm really in. On this side, to take the terminal cover off, it's just kind of clipped on there, clamped like that, more or less. So you can just kind of pry it right off, no big deal. Um, talking my shit like, hey. I'm really him, don't believe me, come and see me. Got three wishes from my genie, now I'm on your local TV. Y'all don't talk about me, say she wanna come and see. Now, if we were keeping this battery, we'd go ahead and throw the other terminals on. However, we are switching to a full throttle battery, factory size, 24F. So we're gonna go ahead and throw these away and then start taking this battery out. So now we're gonna take the factory battery tie down out. These are both 10 mil as well. You'll need a deep socket. The front one, you can kind of just loosen and then unhook it down low. The back one, however, that rod will stay in there because it's clipped in. You can get it out if you want to kind of force it and break it out. It's easier just to leave it in, pull the battery out and undo it that way. So we're gonna set that aside. Since we're changing the factory battery, let's go ahead and pull it out as well. So now you're gonna take this factory rod, push it down, it'll pop out of the clip set that aside and then there's this plastic kind of trim piece here we always take those out so i'm going to go ahead and get a pry tool and pop it out of there um, talking my shit like hey them really him don't believe me come and see me got three wishes from my genie now i'm on your local tv y'all don't talk about him and say she want to come and see me when i'm in a local city i'm like pause though please step aside so all right now that we've got the old battery out we're going to go ahead and start prepping our new rig candy as we call it these sdhq products to install so this kit specifically right here is for the 34r battery also group 35 essentially this is a smaller battery than what comes factory so we're not going to be using the hardware out of this kit we are going to be using this along with the tabs though set that aside and then when you're using a factory size battery such so as the group 24f or a group 27 in the fourth gen forerunners and second gen tacomas you're going to be using this hardware from sdhq it is their j-hook kit essentially now assembling this kit is super easy on tacomas and forerunners you're going to use one of the long hooks and one of the short hooks the long hook will go in the front of the vehicle and then the short hook will go in the rear So once you run that down a decent little ways and go ahead and set those aside, essentially you're gonna to need to space them out once they're on the vehicle so that you know exactly where they'll sit. So like I said, longer one goes in the front, in that case it'd be here. And then you're gonna use this bolt through here, thread it in, and that's the assembly. So they're super easy to install, very, very quick install. Let's go ahead and knock that out. Get the SDHQ tie down thrown in here. Essentially, you're gonna grab the longer one, hook it down at the bottom. What you're looking for is that the top of this piece is within three quarters of an inch or so, maybe an inch or so of the bottom of your actual tie down bracket. That's just so that you're not too far or too close with these guys here, because it will get a little bit closer, obviously, as you tighten it. shooting for that half to three quarter inch mark. Yep, about a half inch right there. So we'll take this bolt, line it up, 
drop the bolt down and thread it in. So now we're just gonna go ahead, tighten these up and the battery tie down will be installed. Super simple. So here we have the SDHQ terminal kit. This comes in a few different variations and most vehicles have different variations as well. This kit is kind of their master kit. This is the, the core kit, the foundational kit, if you will. This is what comes with almost every other kit. Now there's some exceptions. Some of the Fords and like the new Tundra don't have this base kit as kind of their foundation, but that's because they're not using these two terminals here. I'll show you the way that I kind of like to assemble these. They come with all the hardware you need and everything like that, obviously. Now let's go over a couple things. First things first, you'll see you have two smaller holes on the back here, right? Well, a lot of people are kind of have asked us why you come with, why the kit comes with six bolts. And the reason being is because on some of the Super Duties, you're not gonna use this larger top bolt here. On the Ford Super Duties, and keep in mind, they're trying to make this kit as universal as possible. You won't use that top bolt. You'll use the hole that's right in front of it. You can't use both of these at the same time because they're so close together, they overlap. The reason is it's for two different applications. So on the Toyotas, you have less of a shelf there, less of a neck per se, on your factory terminal to lay down. And on the Fords, it's much longer. So they put the bolt hole for the Ford slightly forward and then use the smaller hole size so you don't have to replace the terminal because the cables are so short. It doesn't really apply to us here on the Toyota install, but I know I have a lot of people ask about why there's two extra quarter 20 bolts. That's the reason why. So we're gonna go ahead and start assembling the terminals, positive or negative. I like to do these main cross through bolts the same way. So I essentially do them in such a way that when the vehicle is put all the way together on the positive side, you're not trying to pull this long bolt out to where it can contact your battery tie down and cause it to arc out, right? So we want it to go this way. Whereas the other side never comes out because that's the clamping bolt. So we put it the opposite way. So since it never comes out, we'll never risk it hitting that battery tie down, especially when we're pre-assembling it like this. So we're gonna take a washer, throw it on this side, take the nut, throw it onto. And now that's what I would consider a assembled terminal for the pre-assembled terminal, if you will, for getting it installed in the vehicle. The other one we're gonna do the exact same way because this side's a lot closer to the fender skirt for the inner fender there. And because of that, we won't be able to get this longer bolt out unless it's put in this way. And since this is the ground side, it doesn't matter if it touches the tie down because that's already grounded as it is. And then once again, this side will never come out. So we'll go ahead and run it from this direction. There we go. So now we essentially have two pre-assembled terminals. Let's go ahead, get these installed on the vehicle. All right guys, so now we are going to go ahead and get these terminals thrown on. We're we'll gonna take the protective covers off of the full throttle battery that they ship with, throw the ground on right there, positive right here, and get these tightened down. Uh, these are gonna be using a 13 millimeter. So if you don't have any aftermarket accessories being wired in, what I would recommend is going ahead and throwing those smaller bolts onto the back. Take these guys, throw them in, tighten them down so they're there ready for later. If you do like we do, go ahead and connect those now so that you can cover them up later without having to worry about it. If you're staying in factory right now, don't really have anything going on there, you can take your power, throw it on, throw these guys on with your top bolt and clamp it down. But like I said, we've got some cables connecting, so we're gonna go ahead and get those thrown on right now. The main difference between the 2019 and previous versus the 2020 plus four runners is gonna be this relay and fuse box right here. Uh, it houses some new relays, new fuses, blah, 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 for this vehicle. And we either need to relocate this or modify the bracket. You can kind of go either route with this. I've had customers do both, we have done both. You can relocate it to back here, but it's not quite as sturdy as leaving it underneath our bracket. The only problem is that you have to trim this bracket a tiny bit, really either way, um, whether you relocate it or leave it here. 
and if it's left here it's still much sturdier because it has the mount from underneath so that's what we choose to do we'll go ahead and show you now how to modify it so that you can leave it here and it is a little bit of pain to get one of the bolts in but you only have to do it once right so we're going to start by taking this guy out here and there's going to be a 12 millimeter Now, if you recognize, these are the same holes that our kit uses. There's the one that the bolt came out of and one that this little leg right here sits down inside of. So we're kind of just going to bend that bracket out of the way. It's thin sheet metal, <laughs> bends really easily. So we're going to move that out of the way. And then this little tab right here is sitting in the hole that we need. This is also the same hole in the fourth gen four runners, the previous fifth gen, second, third gen Tacoma, Lexus GX vehicles. So these two holes are pretty universal amongst all the Toyotas. The way that we found best to do this, you can obviously get different cutting tools in there. You could get a small grinder in there if you wanted, but we figured the best way is just gonna be to use sheet metal shears. We have a nice pair of uh, Wiss ones here. You could pick some up at Home Depot. I'm sure you can get them from Harbor Freight, but. All right, so now that that's cut and trimmed out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and kind of bend our bracket back. Obviously you see we have enough clearance here now. So move that a little bit again. We're gonna leave it sitting there. I'm gonna grab our Garmin kit and we'll go ahead and drop it in. I like to tilt bracket backwards. Just slide the bolt in and then you can kind of thread it in by hand. Obviously this bracket from this factory piece, a little bit in the way, a little bit annoying, but definitely not too hard to work around. Now once we have this piece almost all the way in, I'm gonna go ahead and take the other one Put it through the factory bracket, through our kit, and then you can kind of, you have to push the factory bracket in, get it all wiggled in place and it'll line right up. And now I can just thread it in. We've had customers tell us that they like using the factory bolt in the front. We've used our bolt a number of times. It really doesn't matter. Whatever you find easier, if it's easier to get the factory bolt in there because it's a little bit shorter, then that's fine as well. But once both bolts are in, go ahead and tighten them down. Now that we've got the Garmin mounted, time for the easy part, which ironically is the part that people think is the most hard or anticipate will be the hardest. It's connecting all of the cables and doing the electrical. It's really super simple. The Garmin power switch obviously needs a power and a ground cable, right? So we're gonna take the factory ground, route it down underneath all this stuff, all the way back here, and retrieve it back here. I like to route it around everything so that it's not caught on or wrapped around anything. So connecting it right here to the power switch. Now we're gonna take the power cable for it, connect it to the power port, and we're gonna take this nut off here, along with the little warning label that comes on the Garmin. Route the power cable right down and under everything like we did the ground cable. Obviously you saw I connected the power and ground to the power switch itself first. That's so that if we connect it over here, we don't have live wires floating around back here while we connect them to our component. So we'll go ahead and take one of the little bolts for the back of the SDHQ terminals now. And we'll tighten that one down so we don't have anything else connecting to that bolt. All right, so now we're gonna take our ground cable. Once again, route it under stuff over here. And then connect it to our ground bar. We'll grab the ground cable down here, loop it around, and connect it to the back of the terminal as well. With all of our aftermarket ground cables connected, we'll go ahead and throw the protective cover on, throw the factory ground back on, and then run that bolt in. 
So one of the things that's slightly different about the new 4Runners as well is with this bigger terminal fuse here from the factory, we actually need our terminal fuses to go the other direction. That's really not a problem though, so we're gonna go ahead and just flip those around. And then reassemble your battery terminal so that the terminals are facing forward rather than backwards on this vehicle. So the final step, we're gonna go ahead and connect the Garmin power switch power cable to the 125 amp fuse. And then obviously connect the four fuse fuse block right here to the 50 amp fuse. Throw the washer and the nut back on and tighten them down. Now that's done, we're gonna throw the protective cover onto the studs, covering all the exposed metal right there. The protective cover, you do have to trim a little bit when this terminal is here, the terminal fuse mount. So get that trimmed, throw it on. Keep in mind when you're connecting these, you have two battery cables here. You have the factory one like that, and then you got the factory terminal fuse system that needs connected as well. Get those lined up, slide the bolt through, and get it threaded in. We'll tighten this down and we're all done. So as you see, our foundational kit is super easy to install. It comes with everything that you need to get your vehicle up and running. You can do this in pieces. You can do it all at once, whichever way you choose. Super simple. Via email, sales at blazeoffroad.com or just go to our website, chat with us through there, shoot us a message on Instagram. We'll be happy to help you get any of these components or help you figure out the install if that's what you're looking for. Once again, this is our power switch kit, a complete kit with everything you need. It only comes with everything. It's the easiest way to put it. We don't offer it in any other way except ready to run. And then the SDHQ terminals, the tie down, and the full throttle battery. Now this truck is ready to get built out so it can go wheeling.